It is 23 days to the general election, and if there is one state to watch out for, it is Delta State. The governorship election in the state promises to be a tough battle, given some of the heavyweights gunning for the governorship position. So far, three personalities stand tall above others, which might, which might make it a three-horse race. Once a stronghold of the People's Democratic Party, Delta is now somewhat of a swing state as the All Progressives Congress has been able to break in with a huge support base, making it quite tricky to predict a clear cut winner. The candidates of the PDP, Sharif Oberevori, that of the APC, Senator Oviomo Agege, and the candidate of Abga, Great Oboru, who also wields a huge support base in the state are going to slog it out at the governorship poll come March the 11th. Who succeeds Governor Ifai Okoa? We have in the studio a member of the APC, Timi Tonye. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, you for much. joining us at TVC Breakfast. Thank you. And joining us from Abuja <coughs> studio is PDP Chieftain Ruben Izeze. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. Right. Eyes are on Delta states, saying that uh, Delta is somewhat of a swing state as it is now, and that uh, the APC and ABGA have been able to break in, so to speak. But is that what you are seeing leading up to the elections? Uh, I didn't get your name. However, let me correct let me correct an impression. Uh, when you started your analysis, you said Delta uh, seems to be a three-horse race for the governorship elections. Let me correct that impression. It is a two-horse race, and it is between the PDP and all the other parties. That is the reality on ground. Forget whatever you see on the pages of the newspapers or the social media. The reality on the ground is that the governorship race in Delta State is a two-horse race between the People's Democratic Party and the other political parties. That I can assure you of. And when you introduced uh, my very good friend and uh, elder brother, Timmy Toye, Honorable Timmy Toye, you introduced him as a member of the APC. The last time I checked, Honorable Timmy Toye is still a member of the People's Democratic Party. When he spoke to me yesterday when he called, he did not inform me that he had decamped to the APC. I know he's a member of the Delta Unity Group, a very strong member, but I am unaware if he has moved on to the APC. That is information you are just giving to me this morning. So, Honorable uh, Timito, please, can you clarify that point? Are you now a member of the APC? All right. Uh, the question is to you now. Okay. Um, and uh, you also talked to us about he saying it's about the, the, the governorship race is between mm. the PDP and others. Well, uh, let me just say uh, thank Ruben. I think that created this uh, comical relief uh, in starting the conversation. Uh, Ruben, I know, is very rooted in Delta, and he knows the, there's, a, there's a change, there's a, there's a hair of change going on in Delta. From all the local governments, you can see it. I was in PDP, quite right, and everybody knew that I've already resigned my membership of PDP, arising for some of the, from, from some of the things that he, Ruben, being a comrade, has been privately complaining to me about. Yes, we are in the public space now. <laughs> it's good to grandstand, <laughs> but I know that Ruben is in the wrong place, and very shortly he will join us uh, in the APC, where the wind is uh, fast blowing. I can assure you that I, I will say, not be grandstanding here. Our uh, private conversations remain private. Uh, no, but you, you you mentioned, but if you want to bring it to uh, the public no, 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 space, no, no, I no, am no, confident, no. I am capable, uh, uh, I am competent to bring those conversations to the public space because we consider ourselves intellectual partners. Now here we no, are. No, but, uh, we were members of the sister assembly. There was nothing that we discussed that is a secret. Everybody knew my stand. My stand in the sister assembly is unambiguous. It remains unambiguous. That assembly that you were a member of has passed. And you always called me privately to say, ah, ah, surulere, surulere, take it easy. It's not everything that the hunter sees in the bush that the hunter comes no. out to say in the public. Farah Bale, you were always holding me back from 
pointing out my frustrations. Yes, that you did as my intellectual partner and senior. However, in this seventh I assembly, thought... you've not been a member of the seventh assembly, so you cannot talk about the seventh assembly. Those private conversations are no have a conversation. I have really. brought them to the public domain so that you don't try to emotionally blackmail me that we used to have private conversations. <laughs> You're not a member of the seventh assembly. I thought assembly. we are. We I thought to we are going to have a conversation. Yes, you actually referenced our discussion yesterday. And please, let's stick to the conversation. <laughs> and don't let us begin to talk about those things that were private. Yes, conclusively, we're both in the, in, the, in the Sixth Assembly. And like I said just now, I know your position about certain things. And I know they have not changed. They are still your position. Just like the way you, you are just saying sure now. But what that. I want to clear is that, what I want to clear is that, uh, whether it's a two-man uh, ostrich between the PDP and others is what we're trying to clear. But I can tell you, uh, Ruben, there's a wind of change going on in Delta. And you can see it. I am an old government person. So I can do a very good comparative analysis from the days of James Sibori till now. And I know that incrementally, the quality of governors is going down. And we have some, um, some facts to buttress those ones. And uh, you know I came into government to strengthen the bureaucracy as chairman of House of Assembly Service Commission. And I can tell you as I stay here now that the bureaucracy is not what it used to be again. And you agree with me in terms of recruitment. If you are recruiting now in Delta, I, I do not you know agree apart you. from the approval, I let, let, me, let me finish. I'm going to give assembly. you your time. I, I'm going to... The bureaucracy in the House of Assembly is better than it was when you left it. That I can affirm. Oh. Because the I don't quality think of the personnel a... I work with today is better than the quality of the personnel I met when we came into the Sixth Assembly. That is a fact that, that is, is in the not... public domain. The, I think the number that is of not trainings a... that think... the members of staff of the House of Assembly Service Commission I think that is not the facts on the ground. Since I became a member of the Assembly from the Sixth uh... Assembly to the Seventh Assembly, it's more than all the community they attended under your leadership. Your two-term leadership as chairman of the House of uh, Assembly. Uh, I was seven years as chairman of the commission. The quality, the, 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 of, the the quality of, of governance in your time. The quality of governance in your time as chairman of the commission is not the same now. It is better. That is not the now, facts on the ground. You can find that. That out is not the, the facts on the ground, Ruben. You are not there anymore. No, I, am there. There. I, I know what is happening there more than you. And I can tell you that the quality I know what of is happening there more than you. Because they have been exposed to more training. No, you are grandstanding. Let us face the facts. As chairman. There's Let's no face the facts, Ruben. Let us face the facts of government. Let us stick if with the facts. The it's fact not to be grandstanding. Uh, all right. Not when was the last time you have serious training in the commission? As chairman of the House of Assembly Service Commission. All right. Gentlemen, we need to focus on the issues. Let's face the issues of the issues. If you want to talk about your candidate, let's face it. I'll talk about my candidate. No, let's face the issues. So that we can make it. Yes, yes. I think I want to ask you guys questions. Yes. You are a defective issue. from. Don't take us the of your you are a defective of from. from. You are a defective mm. from uh, PDP. Yes. And the issue has been about what we call the DUG. Yes. Yeah, the, the Denver. Group. Sorry, not the Denver. Sorry. De Delta Unity Denver is where group. I yes. always go. Yes. The Delta Unity, Unity group. group. Yes. What is the nature of the, 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 the DUG now? Some people say it is with. Uh, with uh, PDP, some people say, no, 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 the DUG has now moved. And some people say that people like you who defected are actually on the periphery of the DUG. How would you respond to that? Okay, thank you very much. The DUG, like you stated, is extremely democratic organization and a pressure group. What we did in the DUG is that there is nothing as a decision there that wasn't discussed. We sat down, when we started in DUG, uh, our decision was, who can give us good governance in Delta State? We audited all the governorship candidates. We investigated their pedigree, their background. But unfortunately for the other governorship candidates, they were not able to even convince us. But there is a gentleman called David Devi. He was able to convince us with what he called the modernizing Delta agenda. And this is David Devi's manifesto. It's very clear, we're able to read it, and we identified with him as the person that can give us a, a good delta. 
all his visions were articulated and captured there. But in the PDP primaries, David Adebe did not make it, and he believed that there are still some chances for him to become the governor through the courts. He couldn't make it through the courts. And we sat down as DUG and said, okay, what do we do? What we are after is for the good of Delta, for the modernization of Delta, for the progress of Delta. And it, it's beyond party lines. Some people decided that they wanted to stay with the PDP. And some of us said, no, we have looked at the governorship candidates all through. And we discovered that um, Senator Vyoma Gege has a well-articulated program which he captured in his edge program, and this is manifesto. If they have a manifesto that is well articulated and well, that organized is like this, in the public come space. With it. Now, and now, that is what please, we are, we are, please, we are satisfied now, with Mr. that. Sam, so some please, of us Mr. Sam, I would have to come in within here. The, within the PDP. Mr. And Mr. Sam, I have to move. come in here. Hold on, Mr. hold on. Mr. Sam, we will come hold to on. you. We'll come we'll to you. Let him finish, then we'll come to you. And a lot of people that moved are quite experienced, old in government, and we decided to identify. That doesn't uh, remove the fact that there are some DUG members that believe in the philosophy of Obi. There are some of them that say that they want to stay in the party. But we still have a common BOT. We still have a common executive council. That is how the uh, DUG runs. So there is no conflict in duty, but common understanding for people to, in a, in a very seamless manner, move to where they want no, to the, the, the question I also uh, asked is whether you... We need what to is the mainstream? It. Is it the mainstream? Yeah, we'll come back to it. Is the mainstream... Who, where is the mainstream of There's DUG? There's no mainstream. DUG is fluid. Right. We have DUG in all the... Both the very strong and critical people are in the APC. All right, Honorable right. Isaiah, you wanted to make a comment. Mm. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. I, I needed to quickly put a lie to the fallacious representation that the DUG sat down and interfaced with all the aspirants. Well, he's not a member of DUG. Hold on, hold on, let me tell you. That is not existent. Honorable Izezer, as you make your statement, I would appeal that you, you watch the choice of words you use. Honorable Izezer, if you can hear me, I'm saying as you make your statement, I would appreciate your choice of words. I have not slandered anybody yet. Don't worry, I know the choice of words I am using. I have not slandered right. anyone yet, and I will not mm -hmm. do that. The point I am making is that it is not true. If you would rather have that, well, you are not a is member. Not true. Allow him talk. It is not true that the DUG existed okay. and interfaced with all the aspirants uh, within the PDP that contested for the governorship ticket. The DUG metamorphosed after the primaries of the PDP. Most of the, in fact, all those of them in the DUG were backers of the aspiration of Olorugu David Edebia, which is not a problem. In a party as large as the PDP, it was normal for people to have different uh, interests, which is what politics is all about. Now, when the primaries had held, and the primaries produced the Right Honorable Sheriff Oborewori as the winner, based on the provisions of the amended electoral act that his new principal put his hand on his chest and say, Nami Raitam. Those amendments threw up a lot of, in fact, a lot of surprises across the state and the nation. The Honorable Timmy Toye was a victim of those amendments because he contested the primaries in his party and lost, just as I contested in my own constituency, and lost because of those amendments in the Electoral Act of 2022. Having said that, the DUG then emerged because they believe very strongly, and that's the point I want to make here. There is the notion that certain persons are more intellectually inclined, academically qualified, groomed for the office of the governor. That notion is not true. It is a misrepresentation. Every man created by God is created and born equal before God and the Constitution. So long as that man meets the constitutional requirement, he is qualified to vie, dream, and aspire to any office in the land. And that is the point we're making here. For them, they sit down in their closets and decide on behalf of the rest of the people. They claim to be the intellectual. In fact, their arrogance 
though so much that they say the intellectual wing of the PDP have moved to the APC. And I ask, who are the intellectuals that have moved to the APC? And they say it was a tsunami. At best, what can be described to be happening now is just the devil's dust. It cannot be described as a tsunami. A tsunami is a geological, is a geological phenomenon that involves a volcanic eruption or an earthquake beneath the ocean or on the subsurface of the sea. And you call a few persons who are agreed, genuinely, rightly, or wrongly aggrieved who have left the party to okay, consider um, okay, um, as, uh, I think as uh, a tsunami. I think it's actually I think it's actually a misnomer for somebody that is not a member of an organization to claim authority of what is happening within it. We have other pressure group in Delta States. You have the one you call political vanguard. We don't bother ourselves with that. And we wonder why you people are worried about what is happening in DUG. If it's not something that is uh, strong enough to create the confusion in you. But again, let me quickly say again, that for, for the purpose of emphasis, that the DUG does not take any decision without discussing it. It's an internal thing. And for Honorable Ruben, he begs it that he's not a member to be saying all of this. I wonder where he gets his facts from. I will say that there are some members of DUG that left. Let me profile them for you to know. You are the person that is talking about intellectual arrogance. We are going to talk about the antecedents. There is a lady called Almona Isay. He was a three times commissioner with three different governors, military governor, and a three times member of House of Reps. Rooted in experience, he moved. You have uh, Judith Namuto, a trained 1971 scientist from Ibadan University. So if you are saying those are not intellectuals, I want to know your definition of intellectualism. And former commissioner, a BOT member of, the, of, of PDP, there is Daniel Eju, who was a three times member of House of Reps. You have about three, four speakers that moved with us. So we are not claiming to be what we are not. And we are not saying, but you see, you people sit down and begin to worry yourself about what is happening in DUG. You have made all your points that it's like a dot. Elections is going to be around the corner. Let's wait for the result of the election. But what we are seeing is that DUG has become a source of worries. I wish you don't, that shouldn't worry you people. There was a declaration of DUG in Nundukwa uh, uh, not, not too long ago, and people saw the crowd. And some of the people that came from government as agents, we saw them. They went back and they know what happened there. So the DUG is intact. We have no problem in DUG. And if thousands of people like this will not create division in DUG. Not, no. they will not. You um, uh, talked about uh, your candidate, Dr. Borevori, and that his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> candid his, his candidature is foolproof. But there are legal issues that are still, uh, that are still hanging over his head. What do you respond to this? I don't know what you mean by bigger issues. As far as legal, legal, legal issues, the legal. Of judicata, legal issues. Yes, okay. I don't. Do, as far as I'm concerned, the doctrine of res judicata has rested the issue of David Edewe for good. There's another man who bought the forms, resides in London, who bought the forms to contest the primaries as was his right. He contested, got scored zero votes because he could not secure a vote from even the delegates uh, from his own ward. And as we know, which is usual, he's been sponsored by a third party to uh, litigate in court. He has already <laughs> been awarded costs uh, against him to the tune of 9 million naira by the Court of Appeal of Asaba. Yesterday he was in court in Asaba and our own candidate provided himself, made himself available and testified in court. The only body, the only body that can assert that a document is forged is the body that is authorized to issue that document. They keep beating a dead horse, running from pillar to post, forum shopping, looking for a reason to say the certificate, the white certificate presented by Sheriff Oberiwori is the forged document. Wayek has affirmed that document, that document emanated from it. The only body that could have at least given them a case would have been Wayek by saying that document is forged. Moreover, 
Those are pre-election matters. We are moving to the elections proper. INEC has published the documents that he filled in his forms. And the YX certificate is not one of those documents that he filled in the forms. They should wait until the elections happen. They are only hoping and relying on the court judgment. You know, there are experts in using litigation to acquire public office. We believe in the people. Delta State is terrified. The people are with us. We will get there. As for DUD, we are not worried about you, Honorable Timito, because we know how it works. There are three sets of people who decamp from political parties. Those who live on ideological grounds. That kind of divide is hardly reconcilable. You cannot reconcile those kind of those persons when they leave the political party. The second set of persons are the criers, the help seekers. Their decision to decamp is a cry to the management of the political party to say, we are not satisfied. We need a forum where we can air our grievances and those grievances can be addressed so that they can be resolved. Those set of persons are the people who most of the persons in DUG fall under. We call them committee of the agreement. And then there are the quintessential businessmen. Those ones, they have no honor. Anywhere, as we say in Wari Palace, anywhere but Belen Fees. Those are the kind of people who fall within the third bracket. For me, I'll consider the DUG with utmost respect as those who fall within the second bracket, the help criers. They are angry for genuine reasons, personal or collective reasons. They have their grievances. They are only looking for an opportunity to be heard so that those grievances will be addressed. And as I have always told people, 24 hours is a long time. The back channels are still open. If you are a student of Sunzi, you will know that even on the day of battle, people still change sides. I believe very strongly that uh, most of them in the DUG, they are, they are open to communication. The back channels are open. They'll continue to communicate with the authorities that manage the party. And as we get towards the election, we know that those who have genuine grievances, their grievances will be addressed, and they will come back to the umbrella, that environment that they are very used to, that have benefited them so much in the course of their uh, public service. All right, let's come back to the studio now. I am looking at uh, uh, your candidate's uh, Edge Manifesto, and yes. uh, something that uh, uh, caught my attention here, it says, um, from one of the parts, let me quickly read it. It says, uh, rather than invest in our wealth in our people and modernize our public infrastructure, all we have is constantly growing fiscal recklessness, waste of public resources, corruption, and mediocrity, mediocrity while deploying cheap propaganda and lies to cover them up. Indeed, governors in Delta, all about the politics of exclusion, clannishness, impunity, corruption, and painting God. Now, are we where we should be? How does he intend to reposition the, the, the state and take the people to where they, they are supposed to be? Yeah, thank you very much. I think we are going back to the issues now. Um, in Delta State, you can do a survey, sectoral survey, from the health sector to the education sector, down to even sports. I will give you the first example. Between a Lele and Ugeli, you have only one general hospital, and that is the one in Patan. Sorry, I've lost you guys. On that fast track road. And the whole of the uh, um, health center in Patani have no facility, nothing. The only thing that is being developed in Patani General Hospital is the mortuary. There is no other thing that is developing there. And as it is in Patani, that is, it, that is the way it is in almost all the health sector in Delta State. Even in Ogara, the specialist hospital is a shadow of itself. I'm talking about the health sector. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come to education, if you come to education, the primary education in Delta is scholars. Same for secondary education. Well, we have what they call the university's education system in Delta, which led to the establishment of some additional universities. But in terms of spread, you have one, two of them in the north, Delta North. You have one name changing in, uh, in Uzoro, but the whole of the Riverine Axis, which we are, we are talking about, the Shekiri Axis, the Jaw Axis, and even the oil producing Unukwa Axis, there's no single tertiary institution. So, apart from the fact that the primary education has collapsed, you have the secondary education, you don't talk about them again because there are no teachers. The infrastructure has gone down. The last time we have a lot of infrastructural upgrading in Delta State was when Dr. Oduan developed the secondary education in, uh, in, in Delta State. 
when you have the modern schools all over and primary education, that is an education. We won the sports festival not too long ago, but it was done by what he called hosting to win. A lot of the athletes were brought from outside. We know them. I'm a member of the sports council. I was the first vice president of the uh, Badminton Federation of Nigeria for, for nine years. So we know what is going on. Then in terms of road infrastructure that you want to talk about, we have uh, a shy bridge, what I call a shy bridge on, uh, uh, on the interchange when you enter Delta State. Apart from that bridge, all the roads that have been done have collapsed. That is what you have in Delta. And that is why Ovioma Gege says it will come in to do a total overhaul of the system. And in Delta, if you talk about the human capacity development, you, you be, you've been hearing about the shouting of even the retirees. Mm. These are things you see on the street of Delta every you mean day. pension? The, pension, the pensioners are not being paid. There is no training, no retraining programs in Delta State. So that is what we have in Delta State. And that is why OVA is saying in his manifesto, what you can track, what you can hold him responsible for. You can talk to him even when he becomes the governor to say, you have a document in our front. And before I even leave that, let me talk about when I got to the House of Assembly, because we'd like to talk about that. I gave the governor of the state what we call the need assessment of Patani people. We went around the whole uh, 16 communities in, in, in Patani, and um, all of them told us what they wanted. Nothing was done to Patani people. Let Ruben tell me how many projects have been commissioned in Ugeli South, where I came from. But for Patani, I can tell you there was no single commissioning of any program, any project for the past eight years of Ugeli. I mean, the uh, Okoa's government. That is the truth, and that's a fact. And they speak, they speak for themselves. Uh, I guess we'll come back to. Um, Mr. Honorable is uh, much later because of uh, connection challenges. All right, so we have to stick with uh, the studio conversation. Um, so okay. let's also perhaps uh, look at uh, the core sectors that um, your candidate will be looking at in terms of uh, talking about um, job creation, yes. what are his plans uh, in terms of security, what are his plans what, how does he intend to make Delta State a competitive economy? Yes. You see, the Delta is an oil-producing state. Mm. But the fact that we are oil-producing has made governance and leadership of government very lazy. So what OV is trying to do, or we do when it comes to the government, is to find a way to improve the IGR. Because you must run, and it's been known that in places where you don't have, and where you have resources, development is very slow. And people like to talk about Ashwaju Ebola Tinubu all the time. If he had not had the contingency arrangement when the president, sitting president at that time, withdrew some of his resources, he wouldn't have been able to run. So the first thing OBA is telling us is that he must, as a matter of fact, improve on the high GR to make sure that with or without um, the resources or allocation from the FEDRA, Delta will still run. That is the first thing. Secondly, I believe that Deltans must be properly educated, the human resource development, All right. so that people can have the capacity and strength to stand on their own. And that cannot be done without security. All right. Uh, we'll come back to that. We have Honorable Izeze on the uh, on now. Honorable, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, and I must I must register this protest. This is absolutely unfair. For the past 10, 12 minutes, he's been saying everything. He's been saying your equipment here failed, and we've been calling, and nobody has been responding to us. Your but, equipment here failed. That, um, Mr. Honorable says it, there were challenges and that was what was being addressed. So you can go ahead with your I response. I didn't hear now. anything he said. The only thing I heard him say was um, there's no health center in Patani. And then I've not heard anything else he has said up until this moment. Okay, summarize what you said. Summarize so what you can said so that he can Okay, what I said is that there is infrastructural decay. That's just the summary. 
And I illustrated that with the health center in Patani, okay, uh, where I come from. And you are aware, okay, Honorable uh, Zezi, about let, let, let me start. You said you did not hear. Let me start from that. You said you did not hear. You've had so much time. Okay. Honorable <laughs> Timitoye, you were member representing Patani State Constituency in the House of Assembly from June 2015 to June 2019. That's Furthermore, correct. Within the course of your service in the House, you were chairman of the House Committee on Health. Yes, yeah, that's correct. If within that period you were not mm -hmm. able to address the death in health facilities in Patani local government mm -hmm. or Patani state constituency, that oh, is say, a I, think, I think you are now talking to me. I think it's time for me to face you properly. To let you know, I, I think it's time for me to let Obama you know. I, I, I thought, I I thought we are going to have a conversation. But the way you are making it personal. Let me let me let me let me answer that question. And I'm answering with facts. I am not answering with emotions. These are verifiable facts. Let me answer that question. When I went to the assembly, I went with a clear cut vision to represent my people. The way and manner I achieved that representation was going to be my business. Now, commission projects in Ugele South. I have served in two administrations before I went to the assembly. And I say this, I hit my hands on my chest. Never has it happened. It has never been so good. For Ugele South, in terms of infrastructural development, as it has been under the administration of Senator Dr. Arthur Ifan Yokoa and my stewardship as member representing Ugele South State Constituency. Well, and Road, spawning from Ogio, has been commissioned, was commissioned by the governor of Edo State. And Frota Owa Bridge has been commissioned, it was commissioned by the governor of Edo State. A front of a front of Uge Uge Ekakwame Road has been commissioned. Those are key infrastructural projects that have been abandoned for over 20 years that have been commissioned. Ongoing projects, the people of Orere, since God created the earth and said, Let there be light, they have never seen road infrastructure. Today, there's an 8 billion naira road project going on that will link Otoewu to Orere. Why on earth would I not support the administration as a member representing the South State constituency? The Otutuama, a Saba road, is an ongoing project. Those are projects that touch on the name of our people. And I made it the point, irrespective of the politics. Why you were telling me that my politics was not correct? I was just laughing at that time. Your politics was very correct while you were in the house. Mm. Mine was not correct because I was an activist. Mm. I wasn't playing the politics. But I was able to get those projects home. Today, when people talk about loans, I justify the loans because of those loans, infrastructural projects in Ugele South are consuming about 15 million. My people are benefiting. If your people in Patani did not benefit under your stewardship, you should hold yourself responsible. How could you have been chairman health committee and you are complaining, coming on national TV to say there is no health facility in Patani State Constituency or Patani LGA where you hail from? That is an indictment on your stewardship. In Ugele South, Health facilities are available. There is a new one ongoing. The Owa General Hospital is an ongoing project. And I follow it to ensure that it is appropriately funded. Every challenge in Ugele South, as much as possible, this administration over the last seven and a half years has been forced one way or the other to swallow those challenges. And I can tell you, no administration, I hit my hands on my chest, has dealt with the infrastructural challenges of okay. Ugele South. Okay. State uh, 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 of State of the has done. And okay, under the okay. leadership, of course, of the speaker, under the speakership, Yes, I, I understand where you are coming from. So, but I don't know whether you still remember this, the, the fact that we gave this to the governor. We gave, Go ahead. we gave a need assessment to the governor, and we told him what Patani needed. This is the need assessment we gave to him, and we articulated this. And on this issue of the health, I mean, health center in Patani, we know the number of times we have engagements. I cannot bend the hand of the governor. And if because of this I said I'm not going to be part of his administration again, I think I should be commended for that. And again, we are now talking about common assets. Common assets like the, I mean, the Ogara General Hospital. We know where it was when it started. And you remember that you served Governor Duan directly. And you know that Governor, Governor Duan, before he left, even participated in organ transplant in Ogara. What is happening in Ogara now? And you are talking you about... Do you have the facts for that? Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. What of the roads? What of the roads you mentioned that have been done? Just, no, I don't know what is happening. In, uh, I don't know about what is happening there. Yes. People I can come like to the commission and say kind of facts. But I am I telling you what is happening in Ogaden. You don't know what is happening in Ogaden. And I'm telling you, I was the chairman of ELS. And I didn't remember that we took this up. Certainly with the governor. Of the what is happening there in Ogaden. Of the assembly and of the government of the state constituency. Where you want to fight? I am here and I'm available. So that is a point. Well, that, there's one question I want to. I want let to, us talk about to, our respective um, candidates. Is it, is it, is it, hold on. Now that we yeah. have agreed that you are in the APC and yeah. you have come with an, an agenda which you call EDGE or Precipi, as the case may be, an agenda that you say will solve all the problems that you it have will. identified. As a serving member, you could not bend the hand of a governor. Now you are bringing an EDGE agenda that you believe of will solve all the well problems that you have identified. Let me put it, it to you. It is well articulated. We are all that in is this business. And we've been Where in this business from 1998. How do is you know you keep your legs that? Is it a wrong is it a wrong government? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, gentlemen, hold on, gentlemen. I have a question because we are running out of time. Hold on. Sheriff. Is a say, oh, hold on. He's a street boy. We are saying he has yes, street credibility. Is a say, hold on. Hold on. Born, hold on. born hold on. and raised the in the Wari area. He has seen the challenges of the Wari people is because say, hold he has on. lived with them all along. And it, it, he is right. ready we have to, to give them this. more. It's not agenda. Uh, uh, really. <laughs> almost a year All right, ago. But Ruben, he says, hey, we have to let things go now. We have to end the interview here now because of time. And we must thank you, a PDP chieftain, Ruben Izeze, and then a member of the APC, Timmy Tonya, in the studio for your time uh, on the program. We'll definitely come back to continue this conversation some other time. Mm -hmm.